There we go. I figured it out. Sorry, everyone. Let's start over. <laughs> Thanks for everyone uh, letting me know you could not hear me in the chat. I had my microphone turned off. Wouldn't you know it? I was all ready to go today, too. Well, happy National Embroidery Month. That's what I was saying. I was welcoming all the newbies here to So What. And uh, if you are joining for the first time, let me know. We don't always have audio glitches, I promise. <laughs> but, you know, there's always something. So at any rate, welcome to So What, where we talk about all things sewing. I give you some project inspiration, and uh, we knock around some comments, questions, and uh, get to know one another and put our spin on some fun patterns and projects. So that's what we're going to do today. And uh, here is what I was talking about before when none of you could hear me. In the spirit of National Embroidery Month, you know, all month long, we celebrate all things embroidery. This is a big holiday here for us at Sulky. It's really ranked up there with Christmas because celebrating embroidery is just a wonderful thing. So whoever uh, came up with National Embroidery Month, we salute you here at Sulky. And uh, in that spirit, we have a great sale at sulky.com. We've got buy two, get two 50% off on the things you see here. 12 weight cotton petite singles, filleting petites singles, that's single spools of thread, as well as our stick and stitch and perfect applique. So a great deal there. We also have 25% off all of our hand embroidery designs. So these are our digital designs and you can grab up these great savings until the 13th of February at midnight Pacific time. So great deals to be had. While I'm talking about all the great products and projects that we're going to discuss today, be sure you take advantage of those great deals at sulky.com when you're filling up your cart with other things that you might want to purchase today. All right, so a little birdie has told me that we have a couple of people signed up for our London tour, which is happening November 25th. To December 3rd. And I know some of you, I mean, even for me, it is crazy to start thinking about November. But the cool thing about craft tours, which we partner with craft tours on these wonderful trips of a lifetime that we get to do with them, uh, when we partner with craft tours, they offer payment plans for people who want to go on these tours, but maybe can't, you know, throw in all of the fees all at once. So if you start out now, if this tour interests you and you start out now, you can get on a payment plan and play, pay in monthly increments, which makes it a lot more manageable to join us in November. So this is an amazing tour where we are going to go to Downton Abbey locations. We will do a Harry Potter exhibit in London. Amazing. We're going to see so many sites, eat great food, and be amongst like-minded people who love to sew, quilt, create, and all of those good things. You're going to make friends that you will just adore for the rest of time. So if you're interested in this tour, I put the link in the description of today's post, and you can click on over and read all about it and contact Craft Tours if you're interested, want to learn more information all of those good things. But I will be on this tour and I will also teach a hands-on workshop where we can create something that will commemorate our travels. So really, really great fun times. Um, so if you are one of the ones who have already signed up, drop me a line in the comments or the live chat because I would love to connect with you early on and uh, I would love to know if it's you. Okay. Let's see, this weekend is also the big game. So let me know in the comments, in the chat, who you're rooting for, um, if you will be watching. And uh, you might need a celebratory table runner or mini quilt to put out with your chips and dip and all that good stuff. Even if you're just watching the puppy bowl or even if you're just watching for commercials, it's fun to celebrate with a little handmade something something. So this is actually um, a table runner 
that we created using a cluck cluck sew quilt pattern. So I love looking at quilt patterns in different ways and kind of learning the method of the block. And then you can take that and create table runners, placemats, resize the blocks, take liberties with it. You know, th these patterns, while they are great in and of themselves and you can create them, you know, start to finish exactly as they're written, you can also get creative with them. So uh, this table runner, is three of these football blocks with some pieced borders and really cute football themed fabrics for the backgrounds. I mean, love it. It's perfect for this weekend. So if you're interested in that project and you want to grab up that pattern at Cluck Cluck Sew and then learn how we uh, turned that pattern into a table runner and also some creative quilting ideas for it, that is on the Sulky blog and you can find it at blog.sulky.com. All you have to do is pretty much search football um, and you'll find it there in the listing there. All right, lots of people saying, I watch the game for the commercials. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, I'll be watching from my house, rooting for the Eagles. Lots of people rooting for the Eagles. Oh, Millie says, Casey all the way. <laughs> All right. Love it. Love the spirit. All right. Also coming up, of course, is a Valentine's Day. So we have about a week left until Valentine's Day. So if you want to get crafty, we have some great inspiration at sulky.com for handmade postcards, handmade cards, heart-shaped pot holders, all kinds of things that you can create quickly in an afternoon. And if you're interested in our Conversation Hearts machine embroidery collection, well, you are in luck because one lucky viewer who is watching right now, commenting, sharing, giving me those great emojis, somehow engaging with me here today during the live stream, you are eligible to win the Conversation Hearts machine embroidery collection. Hold on just a second here. Okay. Sorry, we're taking care of the chat uh, here momentarily. It's distracting. All right, so Converse Ocean Hearts. This collection includes 20 little conversation heart designs with different little sewing themed sayings on them. So very, very cute. And you can stitch these out so quickly um, they're about two inches square or, you know, the hearts fit into a two inch square. So they're great for little, you know, uh, cards, bookmarks, um, all kinds of things. And we um, love Mark Montano, who decided to use our Conversation Heart thread palette and create a really fun project. So I want to go ahead and show you that video from here while we take care of uh, the spamming in the chat here. So bear with me on that. And I'm gonna play this video from Mark. If you're unfamiliar with him, you're gonna get to know him really quickly in this video. And then I'll be right back to take you through today's project, which is our reverse applique Lotus t-shirt project. Really, really cute. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this video for you. We'll take care of the comments in the chat. And then I'll be right back uh, to go through today's project. Hey, DIYers and everyone out there who needs to sew a button on every now and again. Today on Make Your Mark, we are making needle books, which became popular about 200 years ago. I'm turning mine into Valentine's with the help of our friends at Sulky, the makers of Sulky Rayon Thread, which is the best rayon thread on the market for machine embroidery. I'm using their Conversation palette of threads, which when purchased, include 20 different conversation heart designs that you can embroider on almost anything. Of course, I'm going to leave everything I used in the description below with links, so take a peek down there. Thumbs up if you like this video and leave me a comment if you have a question about this project or you just want to let me know you're there. Are you ready? 
Let's make some needle books for Valentine's Day. Early embroidery can actually be traced back to Cro-Magnon days or about 30,000 BC. Archaeological finds from this time period reveals fossilized remains of heavily hand-stitched and decorated clothing. The needle was one of humankind's first tools, and the most ancient sewing needles date back to 2800 BC. These didn't have an eye, but a split end which gripped the thread to be sewn. Needles from later than 17,500 BC had the eye at one end and the tapering point at the other, and were made from bones and antlers. The needlebook trend began in the 1800s and grew in popularity until around the 1950s. They were designed to hold the different needles people needed for different projects, and usually they were made from fun scrap fabrics. I'm going to leave a link to Sulky and everything I used for this project in the description below. Thumbs up if you like this video, leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and press the notification bell so that you know I have a new video. Make sure to find me on Instagram at the Mark Montano. Grab any one of my craft books for inspiration. I think you'll like the Big Ass Book of Crafts Volume 2 and I'll see you next week. Happy Valentine's Day.
Why am I always on mute? What is happening? Okay, I apologize, everyone. I think there's a new setting or something that's happening um, with the latest update of my technology, so I apologize. At any rate, Mark Montano um, is a great guy. We go way back. I had him on as a guest on our Sew It All, or when I used to do the Sew It All TV program on PBS, and uh, we just became fast friends. He has such a great background in crafting and sewing, and um, he's done some DIY network, television work, and he's actually the host of um, Meet Your Makers Showdown with Chrissy Metz and Leanne Rimes, and that's a streaming show that you can watch uh, right now. And uh, so he's just a really fun guy and brings some great energy to crafting and sewing. And uh, I saw a lot of you commenting about the fact that he did not use stabilizer in this project. And I got to tell you, the first time I saw the video, I was having a heart attack. Like, how is he going to embroider on this fabric with no stabilizer? What is happening? Um, but oddly, he used a, a very stable fabric as the stabilizer. I've just never seen it before in my life. So he hoops that fabric. And then since he's using the very stiff felt, not sulky felty, for the outer book cover, that is so stable in and of itself that the embroidery doesn't pucker. So he either got lucky or he really knew what he was doing. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I thought it was an interesting take because after the embroidery is complete and he folds the fabric over it, now the wrong side of the embroidery is completely covered by that fabric backing. And you don't have that additional stabilizer, which might have show through or whatnot on the wrong side of the, the design. So I think it was, you know, the combination of using a very stiff, uh, stable felt for the needle book cover, as well as uh, the stitch density in that design that makes it all work. Um, if you were to switch that up, I don't know that that uh, dense embroidery design would work without additional stabilizer. Um, but I did see a number of you say, how is he not using stabilizer uh, during the video? So I was right there with you. Um, all right. So sorry about that sound blip. Okay. Let me go ahead and scroll down. All right. So uh, somebody also said, can we use felty for this? And you may have said that prior to him using the felty for the inside pages of the needle book because you want a little bit, um, you know, silkier, nicer, lighter weight felt to hold your needles. You don't want to put them through that stiff craft felt. Plus your book wouldn't really shut very well um, if you had all layers of super stiff craft felt uh, making up your book. So you'll want to use the felty for the inside pages and then a little bit stiffer felt for the outside of the needle book. But I love the little couching of the eyelash trim and all the little details, the buttons, everything he added to it. So great. And if you want to learn more about Mark Montano, he actually was a guest on our podcast. That's right. We have a podcast and it's called Why I Sew. If you love podcasts, you can check it out on whatever podcast app you listen to. And all you have to do is either search for Sulky Why I Sew or Why I Sew Podcast and you will find it. And I think he's episode four or five. So you can learn lots more about Mark on that podcast as well. All right. Let's see. Oh, Michelle. Michelle says, I won the New Year's Eve Sew Along drawing and got the $100 Sulky gift certificate and loved what I got. Thank you, Sulky. I remember your name from uh, from uh, drawing that winner. So thanks for letting us know. It's awesome. All right. One more thing I want to talk about before we get to our cute t-shirt project, because this is happening next Wednesday. Our Machine Embroidery Basics and Beyond webcast. This is a free event on our education platform at sewingonline.sulky.com. And I will be teaching you the ins and outs of machine embroidery. This is a really great webcast for somebody who maybe has never even done machine embroidery 
or who has an embroidery capable machine, but just isn't sure where to go with it um, or even how to start. We are gonna go over those very basics from the beginning and then we're gonna take it a little bit further and learn lots about thread usage in machine embroidery designs, where and when we can swap thread types and weights. We're also gonna talk about stabilizers, which stabilizers to use when and where, okay? And just by registering for the webcast, you'll receive an embroidery design package from embroiderydesigns.com valued at more than $54. I think that deserves a round of applause. Yes, the fine folks at embroiderydesigns.com have provided all of these great machine embroidery designs in different sizes. And we're gonna talk about different design types. So it's really great that we have these to practice with. We've got a scroll work design, an applique design, a quilting design, and then a satin stitch lettering design. And we're gonna talk about all these different design types and more, and we're gonna use these to create some sample stitch outs using some different fabric and stabilizer combinations. So you can create a reference binder that is really invaluable for when you're working on future projects. So it's gonna be a great time next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, you must register in order to get all of those free designs. And all you need to do is register at sewingonline.sulky.com. And uh, if you can't join live next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, don't worry because after the live stream, the event goes to an on-demand format. So you can log in at any time, find that event in your own personal library, and go to the event page and you will see the video for the event in its entirety. And you can rewind, fast forward, pause, you can watch it again and again and review the information at any time. So it's a really, really wonderful educational opportunity to expand your machine embroidery knowledge. We also have live Q and A's with me, the instructor, and you can get answers to your questions in real time, just like we do here on So What, but with a little, uh, or a lot rather, more, okay? A lot more. All right, we also have a kit for this event uh, because we want you to be able to stitch out all of those designs without hunting for the right thread colors. We have curated a six pack of threads. All those threads are used in those designs all of those colors, and there's also a spool of bobbin thread. And we're gonna be talking a lot about bobbin thread and different choices for that as well. Um, you will also receive three needle packs. These are my favorite types and sizes of needles to use for machine embroidery, because that's right, it's not always an embroidery needle that's perfect for your project at hand. You will also get a sheet of sulky placement stickers already printed onto Sulky Sticky Fabrisaldi. And I'm gonna talk about that with today's project a little bit more. You'll also get a sampler pack of all of the Sulky stabilizers. And uh, most of them, with the exception of one, are all eight by 10 inch pieces. So they fit right into a sleeve in your reference binder and you can take notes onto those plastic sleeves using a um, even a permanent marker, but you can also use a dry erase marker if you wanna be able to change your notes. And we will be creating samples using different threads and fabrics and all of these stabilizer sampler sheets so that you know in the future which stabilizer thread fabric needle recipe worked so that next time you go to stitch that same fabric or use that same thread or do that same technique, you know exactly what to do and where to start. So this is a really great kit for this project, really, or excuse me, for this webcast or really <laughs> loads of projects. And by bundling them here in this kit, you get them at a great, great deal. So check that out. 
and please join us next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right, is everyone ready? Oh, Barbara says, please repeat the name of the webinar. It is called Machine Embroidery Basics and Beyond. You'll find it at sewingonline.silky.com. We also link to it directly in the chat, and it's also in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing the entire description for today's video, be sure to hit the little see more button that you see on the lower right hand side of your screen and the whole description will pop out and you'll see all the featured products I'm talking about today, a link to our craft tours trip, a link to our serger sewing session, which I've been talking about so much lately because it's amazing and it's really um, starting to ramp up a lot with comments and I saw Katrina in our community last night commenting on a lot of folks question um, and you will also find the link to the machine embroidery basics and beyond free webcast in partnership with embroiderydesigns.com. All right so also you will find a link for this month's free pattern which is our reverse applique lotus tee. Now it's not a t-shirt pattern but what is included are the instructions for the reverse applique technique that I'm going to discuss with you right now. And you also get the Lotus applique template. So you'll get this template in real size that you can print out. If you love this Lotus um, image, you can create this. You can also draw your own designs, create your own flowers, hearts, things like that, whatever you would like to reverse applique on your shirt. But if you enjoy this Lotus design, this is part of that pattern download. So you can find this at sulky.com. Again, the description or in today's description of the live stream, you will also find the link to this free pattern and add it to your cart. It will say $0, go through the whole checkout process, and then it will go into your Sulky account as a free download, much like, you know, when you buy embroidery designs um, from a place and, you know, you go through the checkout process and then you get the digital files. All right. So let's get started with this project. The great thing about Sticky Fabrisolvi, which I was just talking about, is... It's basically like creating your own water soluble sticker. It's so great for applique templates, embroidery templates. Um, you can even cut strips of it to uh, denote quilting lines on your finished quilts or your pieced quilts rather, and follow along those lines with your stitching. If you wanna do an intricate, um, you know, straight line, uh, diamond pattern, something like this on your quilt. You can cut strips of it and stitch along those strips. There are so many great uses for this. As I mentioned previously, we print our embroidery placement stickers onto sheets of sticky Fabrisolvi. They are eight and a half by 11 sheets and they fit right into your home printer. So you can print right onto them and cut out your motifs stick them to the right side of your fabric, stitch around them, do what you will, and then wash it entirely away after your item is complete. So not only is it great for transferring, but it also stabilizes the fabric as well. So for something like a t-shirt that's very stretchy, it can be really hard to transfer an embroidery design or to applique something without your fabric stretching and puckering and buckling on you. So we are going to use the Sticky Fabrisolvi as our stabilizer, as well as our applique template. So you need to make sure to grab some Sticky Fabrisolvi sheets. Now, I did want to mention that Sticky Fabrisolvi and Sulky Stick and Stitch are actually the same product. And right now, with our current sale, you can see that Stick and Stitch is part of the sale. So if you grab up a package of Stick and Stitch, you will use it exactly the way I will show you with the Sticky Fabrisolvi. So same product, eight and a half by 11 sheet, 
Really the only difference with Sticky Fabrisolvy is that Sticky Fabrisolvy also comes in rolls and bolts, but Stick and Stitch only comes as the sheets. Now you can also get Sticky Fabrisolvy as the sheets. Everyone following me here? I know it's a little bit confusing. So um, I just wanted to mention that since the Stick and Stitch is on sale, if you don't have Sticky Fabrisolvy, buy the one that's on sale and use it in the same way. All right. <laughs> so, first off, we're going to start with two t-shirts. You want to make sure they're the same size, and you want to make sure that they are relatively similar in how they're constructed, because we're going to layer them and turn them into one. So, in this image, you can see I grabbed two of the same exact t-shirt in different colors at Target. They were five bucks a piece. Amazing, right? We're going to turn them into like a designer original. $10, right? And some sticky Fabrisolvy, some thread, we're off to the races. This also works if you want to put a long sleeve shirt underneath a short sleeve shirt and have the color of the inside shirt be showing through that applique. So if you do a long sleeve shirt, your short sleeve will go over the top of it and you'll sew them together as one along that armband. So you do need to be able to access that. It might be a little difficult with a long sleeve shirt depending on the fit, but I know y'all can do it because lots of you embroider blanks and embroider sort of blindly in those tunnels. So if you use the free arm option on your sewing machine bed, I think you can get in there and do the sleeve just fine. But that's a cool look for this as well. Um, so when you're checking the fit to make sure it's similar, kind of line them up along the shoulder seam, see where the necklines are going to intersect. Um, you know, you don't want a V-neck shirt over the top of a crew neck shirt, that type of thing. So just make sure they're very similar in fit and, you know, shoulder seam, I would say. All right. Um, I like the look of a lighter colored shirt underneath a darker colored shirt. Um, that's just in case the darker color is going to have any show through on the lighter colored shirt. But I also want to mention if you have a shirt that gets stained up here or has a spot or a little, you know, hole that you got from the dryer or something like that, plan to put that shirt underneath the outer shirt and just kind of audition your applique template to make sure that the parts that you're cutting away that will be revealed underneath, those are the parts that don't have stains, right? So if you have a little grease spot on one of your favorite shirts or a little hole, put that underneath and now you're going to get more wearing opportunities for that shirt, totally hiding those stains and imperfections and putting a new shirt over the top. So everybody with me on your shirt choices? Fantastic. So we're going to work with the shirt that goes on the inside first. And we want to kind of measure where we want the upper edge of our applique. So it's a great idea to print out the applique. You can even print it out on a plain sheet of paper first, or just go ahead and print it onto a sheet of your sticky Fabrisolvy or stick and stitch, whichever product you uh, decide to grab print it out and kind of audition it on a shirt you're already wearing without removing the paper backing of the sticker. Just kind of eyeball it in the mirror so that that motif is where you want it placed. Okay. Because, you know, as women, we have lumps and bumps and curves and this type of thing that might affect where you place your Lotus applique. All right. So, Look at yourself in the mirror, decide where you want it, and measure down from the lower edge of your neckline seam, measure down to denote the top edge of the applique. So now we're going to put our t-shirt flat on our work surface and measure down for that top edge of the applique. That is where we're going to put one of the long edges of a plain stabilizer sheet, okay? And 
The reason we are also stabilizing the inside shirt is twofold, really. One, it's going to help stabilize this part of the shirt so that it doesn't stretch while we're sewing it. Because we have to get in there to do all of our stitching, right? And our t-shirt is already sewn up, so we need room to get in there. So inevitably, we're going to stretch that t-shirt to get it, you know, under the presser foot and do some sewing. So we want to make sure that the area where we are putting our applique is nice and stable, not going to stretch, not going to go anywhere. So one sheet of sticky Fabrisaldi goes on top of that inner shirt with the upper edge meeting the upper edge of where we're placing our applique. Is everybody with me? So you'll use one sheet just as a big rectangular sticker right on that inner shirt. Now we're going to put our inner shirt inside of our outer shirt, matching up all of our shoulder seams, our uh, sleeve edges, the neckline edges, and even the lower edge hem. I like to use wonder clips for this because sometimes when you're pinning through a knit fabric, you can accidentally get snags or even holes in the fabric. So I like to use wonder clips for this part. And if your necklines aren't really matching up because the fit is a little off, just do your best because we're actually going to trim away part of our neckline for another pop of color along that edge. See how that's trimmed away? And then it's trimmed away along the sleeve and it's also trimmed away along the hem. So we are tying in the colors of that inner shirt along all these other places as well where we are making the shirt into one. All right. So now we are going to fold our shirt together so that we have a nice center line. So make sure you're lining up your shoulder seam, lining up that neckline, give it a little finger press to really get that center line um, visible for you. Then unfold that t-shirt and you might wanna go over that center line using a little bit of fabric chalk or fabric marker. I really did it for the purposes of you all being able to see it but I could see the fold line pretty well to center my applique piece. If you can't see it very well, just use a chalk marker or chalk pencil and mark along that center fold line. Um, this is gonna help us perfectly place our applique template. So then we're also gonna measure down that uh, where we want the upper edge of our lotus or of our applique, depending on if you're doing another motif. So mine was about two inches below that lower edge seam of the, um, of the collar, let's say, okay, of the neckline. So about two inches down, I marked on either side of my ruler to say, okay, this is where I want the upper edge of the Lotus applique to hit. All right. Okay. Uh, Dorothy says, should you pre-wash the shirts if they are new? Thank you for saying that. Absolutely. Yes. I always pre-wash a t-shirt or a blank, a garment, especially if there's cotton in there. You just have no idea how much it's going to shrink. And I would hate for you to go through all this stitching and all this to have your outer t-shirt shrinks one percentage and then your inner t-shirt shrinks a different percentage. Then you've got a puckery looking applique when you're all done. So absolutely pre-wash and dry the t-shirts that you plan to use for sure. Thank you for mentioning that. All right, so after we mark that upper edge, then I also marked along the center of the applique and I went over to the edges and marked the edges of the applique just to be on the safe side. Um, at this point, you could also, if you want, try on the shirt. I know it's clipped together and all this, but just to make sure that your placement is where you want it, you could always try on the shirt. You could always mark your outer shirt 
before you put your inner shirt inside as well. So lots of different options, but you really want to make sure that your placement is where you want it. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll put, even with embroidery designs, we just decide to center it on a t-shirt and all of a sudden we put it on and bingo, we are um, really emphasizing a part of our body that maybe we don't want to because all eyes are going to go to the motif or the design. So keep that in mind when you are doing your placement. You could also put a really pretty design on the lower, you know, left side of the shirt. And let's say that's where you have a stain and that's the outer shirt, right? Well, put a heart or something down on the lower edge, you know, right where that stain is and cut it away and then show off the shirt underneath. Really, really great way to extend the life of kids clothing as well. So many stains with the kids clothes. All right. So once we've got our placement figured out, we're going to put our motif sticker right on the t-shirt right side, centering up everything. Now, I want to mention about printing out your lotus flower, or if you decide to, if you want to find some clip art or something like that, um, you want to make sure that your lines are pretty well defined, that they are not touching each other, so that you have some areas of the shirt that will remain uh, after you stitch around them. Okay, so when you print onto the sticky Fabrisolvi or the stick and stitch, first off, you want to be sure that you are printing on the fabric-like side, not the paper backing, because the paper is going to be torn away to create your sticker. And you also want to put your printer on the lowest ink setting, if possible. So I did not do that with this because... I wanted to show you what can happen if you oversaturate the stabilizer with ink. Do you see along the upper edge there where I have a big ink smudge across my stabilizer? Um, it's also probably because I needed to clean out my ink cartridge area, so I got a little bit of smudging. But sometimes um, if you oversaturate that stabilizer, it can bleed ever so slightly around the edges, which isn't really a big deal. If you get that or you get a little smudge, just set it aside and let it kind of dry and let the stabilizer kind of absorb that extra ink before you start applying it to your t-shirt. That way it's not going to come off on your hands. It's not going to transfer to another part of the shirt, etc. Okay. And as with sewing machines, everyone has a different printer. So we can't really, um, you know, give directions for every type of printer there is in existence. You just have to really do some tests and get the settings right for your particular, you know, equipment. But I wanted to show you this. That's why I have a smudge on mine because I did not turn my lowest, turn my printer to its lowest ink setting. You really just need to be able to see the design. It doesn't need to be super, super dark. We're going to cut it away and throw it away, wash it away, etc. anyway, when everything is complete. And yes, it is on a home printer, Millie. You can use a laser or inkjet printer for this. And uh, it, it's just an amazing product that's going to wash away when everything's complete. All right. Let's see if I can figure out where I just was with my images. Here we go. So I've cut out my sticker, or my motif rather. You can see I've left a generous border around the motif edges so that it's also stabilizing my fabric during the stitching process. And the upper edge of the lotus flower, those little V points, that's where um, or that's what I placed against my upper edge mark. Does that make sense? And then, of course, I centered the motif using that center line uh, that I marked with my chalk. All right. So now we need to set up our sewing machine. And you do need to make sure that you have a jersey needle. This is a ballpoint needle that is going to push our fabric fibers aside, 
rather than piercing through them. When you're working with a knit, the structure of the fabric, um, since it's not a stable woven fabric, we don't want to pierce through it. Otherwise, we can get snags and holes in the knit. So instead, we want that needle to push those fibers aside to make room for the thread that we're adding to it. That's why we want a ballpoint needle rather than a pointy sharp needle. So make sure you grab up a jersey needle, and I'm using a size 7010 needle because I'm also working with sulky 50 weight cotton thread. I'm using cotton thread because I'm working with cotton t-shirts. You could use a polyester 40 weight thread if you prefer. It's gonna give you a little bit more shiny look to it, um, but pretty as well and also decorative in its own right. I wanted my stitching to kind of blend in with the knit. But that being said, I also used a thread color that matched my inner t-shirt color rather than the outer t-shirt cover. Uh, right. So, <laughs> so I'm using it as another decorative element and pulling out that lavender color again on the shirt. But you could certainly use a thread color that matches your outer shirt instead, and then it will really blend in and look really cool. All right. And again, I have to figure out where I just was. Jersey needle. All right, so we're gonna insert our Jersey needle. We're gonna thread our needle with the 50 weight cotton thread, and we're gonna use the same thread in the bobbin. And there you can see my 50 weight cotton thread that I've chosen that matches my inside shirt. And we are going to start sewing through the two top t-shirt layers. As I mentioned before, it's really helpful to use your free arm on your sewing machine so that you can maneuver the shirt, um, you know, in the collar areas and things like that and get in there and make sure everything is nice and flat. So we are going to sew through our top sticker, our top t-shirt, our inner sticker, and our inner t-shirt right now. So we've got two layers of stabilizer and two t-shirt layers. Of course, we're gonna keep our two back t-shirt pieces or layers out of the way of the stitching at all times. So I started along the lower edge center right between those two motif lines. And rather than stitching right along the black lines of the motif, I'm stitching about a quarter inch away from them. So you can see it's about a quarter inch and some of your stitching lines might intersect like you see here. That is totally fine. Now, if you prefer, you can stitch along the black lines of the motif. And then when you plan to cut away the black parts of the motif, you will cut away leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. But I found it easier to stitch a quarter inch away from those motifs. And don't even worry about those intersecting lines. They will not even be noticeable once your applique is complete. So after stitching around all of the motifs, you're gonna turn your shirt to the wrong side and clean up any threads that are along the back of the work. But it looks relatively clean um, and nice, and it was so nice and stabilized. Everything is still laying nice and flat because our stabilizer is still attached. Oops, I need to make this smaller. What has happened here? I can't see what's going on. All right. So before we ever even wash away any of the stabilizer, now we need to make our t two t-shirts into one a little bit more. We don't want our neckline, our sleeves, our hemline flying free from each other and have only our applique stitching holding these shirts together. So we're gonna set our sewing machine for a very narrow, long stretch stitch. This is gonna look like a zigzag, but instead of it zigging, zagging like this, it's gonna zig and zag like this. 
That way, when we go to put on our shirt over our head and we need that bit of stretch to fit over our head, that stretch stitch is gonna allow for the stretch. If you've ever put a shirt on over your head and you hear a popping noise, that's the thread breaking because it's a straight stitch and maybe your head didn't fit in there quite nicely or as you wanted it to and that little bit of extra stretch caused the seam to pop. So you need to make sure when you're doing your neckline and sleeves especially that you choose a long stretch stitch for those stitches. Now when you do the hem, depending on the fit of the shirt, you might be able to do a straight stitch along the hem, but that's gonna be personal preference and dependent upon how the shirt fits. If it's a very loose fitting shirt on you and the bottom is quite open, you could probably get away with a straight stitch, but if you need that extra room for your hem of your shirt to fit over your hips or even to, just to fit over your shoulders while you're putting it on, then be sure to use that stretch stitch for that one too. So notice I still have my wonder clips here along my uh, neckline. And I'm just gonna place my stitches right over the top of the existing stitches of that neckline seam. All right. And I believe that's the same image, okay. <laughs> Then we're gonna follow suit with our sleeves. And I just placed my stitches right in between the two stitches of that twin needle or cover stitch that's on my shirt. Um, so you can just follow whatever hem stitching you have on your shirt uh, to complete that. But again, be sure to use that stretch stitch here as well. And if you are using a long sleeve shirt under your short sleeve shirt, uh, you'll need to just be sure you can get in there to be able to uh, stitch that seam um, inside of the long sleeve. All right, everyone's with me. <laughs> and then we're going to follow suit with our hem. So you can see with my hem, I used a longer straight stitch for this hem because these shirts have quite a forgiving fit on me. I have a number of these cheap Target shirts um, and I know how they fit on me, but you can also just try it on. First and foremost, try it on before you ever even start the project um, and then decide how much stretch you need along that lower edge. You can see I can still stretch this hem, um, you know, a little bit, but if I really need to, needed to stretch it, that seam would pop if it wasn't a stretch stitch. All right. So after we have joined our two shirts into one, we are going to add some more little decorative details. Now, since our applique is total raw edge applique and we have a little bit of the little, you know, curls along the corners and a tiny little bit of fraying, um, which is really indicative of that raw edge technique, we are going to follow that through with the rest of the shirt and do some raw edge hems. So you're gonna take your outer hem and kind of pull it away from that under shirt and just trim it close to your stitching line. Leave yourself a good eighth of an inch. You could even leave yourself a quarter inch um, or you could even just slice through the lower edge of that folded hem and then you'd have kind of you know, that raw edge look on your outer shirt and your finished hem on the inside. Um, Donna's asking about stitch length. I believe I used a 2.5 standard stitch length for this, but then when you're using that stretch stitch, you want a longer, narrower stretch stitch. So it almost looks like a straight stitch, but it has that little bite going into it that a stretch stitch has. So experiment and kind of try and follow suit with how the shirt is already constructed as well. And now we're going to do the same thing with our um, neckline, with our neckband. So you'll pull away your outer shirt, leaving your undershirt intact, and trim away uh, that collar 
or neck band rather. Okay, so now that we have all of our sleeves trimmed away, all of our collar trimmed away, and all of our hem trimmed away, now we get to trim up our applique. So another great thing about having that layer of stabilizer on the undershirt is that it's really easy to feel that with the tip of your scissors. So you won't go poking through your undershirt while you're trimming away the applique pieces on the outer shirt. So it gives you this nice barrier for your scissors to ensure that you're not gonna poke that through. So it's really helping to stabilize that knit. It really helps when you're doing the applique stitching as that extra layer of stabilizer as well. And it also serves as this barrier so your scissors won't hit it when you're trimming away the applique pieces. So I just find my very sharp, small pair of snips or scissors and I create a snip in one of the uh, motif sections and just start cutting away along that outer motif line. And here's where you can fudge it a little bit. If your stitching was a little off kilter, just come in about an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch from your stitching and come a little bit inside that motif edge. Um, a little bit here and there is not really gonna make that much of a difference. You just wanna make sure you're not clipping through your threads or clipping through the shirt underneath. And you can see this happens relatively quickly. It's very meditative and um, you can see that stabilizer poking out underneath and it's just so, so helpful doing this technique using these products. So now we have our lotus flower all cut out. The stitching is complete. Everything else is done and all we need to do is remove that stabilizer and we will have the big reveal. So what I like to do is since I've got two layers of Fabrisolvi and it's kind of a, you know, it's a large scale motif. It prints on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. Um, you know, you could put this under, let's say your bathtub faucet or your kitchen sprayer, uh, but it might take quite a while because of those two layers and because that second layer is underneath the first layer of t-shirt. So what I like to do is I throw it in the washing machine and I put my washing machine on a low water setting and I do a rinse and spin setting, that's it. I don't put soap in it, nothing. I do a rinse and spin and then I check it, make sure all the stabilizer has been removed and then I just dry it and it's done. And it's the easiest way to remove this stabilizer in this sort of application I have found. So here is our finished applique and it has that little bit of boho feel with the raw edges and a really cool design. And again, if you don't like the lotus flower, you can take your sticky Fabrisolvi, find some clip art, make sure that it is sized in the right size for you know the motif that you want. You could even do clusters of motifs, maybe along um, your left shoulder and then along the right lower edge hem, lots of different options. You could simply cut out a heart for Valentine's Day, stitch around it, and you're good to go. You could even embroider love or I heart you or something in the center of that heart, and you would have some really easy Valentine's Day uh, wearables that, you know, are creative, fun, get you to the sewing machine, get you learning something new, and, uh, you know, everybody's going to ask you where you got that t-shirt. I'm just saying. All right. So it's as easy as that. And as long as you have that sticky Fabrisolvi, or like I said, you could use Sulky Stick and Stitch sheets. They're on sale right now. Um, it's so, so easy using that. All right. So I'm going to take a look at our questions, comments, concerns, all of that. And so if you do have questions, be sure to put them in the chat or the comments. If you are engaging with the post today, you are automatically eligible to win our Conversation Hearts Machine Embroidery Collection, which includes 20 
designs that are perfect for Valentine's Day and beyond, really. All right. Let's see. A lot of people asking, hey, can I do this with machine embroidery? I mean, you can layer up some t-shirts and add machine embroidery to them. No problem. But this is really a reverse applique technique. Uh, so maybe you have a t-shirt that has an embroidery design in the center, but it's got some imperfections along other parts of the shirt. Put it inside your outer shirt. Cut away your outer shirt to reveal your cute embroideries. Stitch around them using your Fabrisolvi, and you've just gotten more life out of one of your favorite t-shirts. All right. So, Linda, it, the Lotus design does not come in an embroidery form, but if you do want to use that embroidery template for, let's say, hand embroidery, I don't see why you couldn't go along the outer edges of that motif with, let's say, a back stitch or running stitch for hand embroidery, and then cut away the fabric underneath, um, or even do a satin stitch embroidery with it. You could resize it if you have Adobe Acrobat, or um, you might even be able to import it into a Word document, something like that. But all kinds of clip, out, out, clip art out there can also be used for this technique. You just want to be sure, again, that you have different sections of the motif that aren't connected to each other because you'll lose all the definition in your lotus flower, your hearts, your what have you, um, if your motif is just one big outline because then we're going to cut it away and we would either have to add those details back in with sections of the fabric that we cut away. Let's say we want to do a heart and then we want a heart inside of it. Well, you could cut out your first heart, then cut out another heart from the fabric that you just cut away and put that in the center and applique around it. And then you'd have kind of like two hearts on your t-shirt. So lots of different options and inspiration. All right. Wonder clips to the rescue. I know, Betsy, they are good for so many things. <laughs> All right. Terry says a V-neck or scoop neck over a crew neck shirt might actually look interesting. You never know. Um, it might get a little tricky when you're cutting away um, your various necklines underneath to make your shirts, you know, behave as one. But please experiment with the technique and let us know and shoot us some pictures of it. Um, and if you're not a part of our Facebook group, it's called Sulky Stitch and Post. And that's where we encourage you to post pictures of your finished projects. And if you have any questions about Sulky products or sewing in general, we are here for you. And we're always on that Facebook group interacting with each other. So you can be a part of it. Ask to join. All you have to do is go on your Facebook account, search for Sulky Stitch and Post, and ask to join, and then you could be part of the fun over there. Nancy says, I can't wait to try this technique. All right. Heather says, this might work for embroidery cut work. Interesting. Okay. And yes, Louise, you will be able to rewatch this video. As soon as we are not live streaming, uh, the video becomes on demand right there on our Facebook page, on Twitch, and on YouTube. Actually, on YouTube, we have an entire So What channel. And we are on episode 167 today, so you have 166 more episodes you can search for if you're looking for a particular product, project, or technique. You can search within that playlist, and you might just find a video on it. What is the stabilizer that you use that is on sale today? All right, so the stabilizer I use for the project is called Sticky Fabrisolvi. It comes in 8.5 by 11 sheets. However, Sulky Stick and Stitch is the same product. It also comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets, and that happens to be on sale right now. Buy two, get two 50% off. So if you grab up that Stick and Stitch, you can print on it and use it in the exact same way that I used the Sticky Fabrisolvi. Makes sense? I know, not really, but hopefully. <laughs> All right. Love that I can go back and watch the presentation again. Excellent. 
You can also do that with any one of our live webcasts or videocasts, sessions, special events over on sewingonline.sulky.com. If you ever can't join live because you have a conflict, be sure to still register for those events so that you have access to all of that great content. Sometimes we have really awesome special guests, Suki Sews, um, uh, EmbroideryDesigns.com, Embroidery Library, Sally Tomato, all kinds of special guests sometimes join us for these events and you don't want to miss it. So you can also go to SewingOnline.Sulky.com and add any of our legacy webinars or events that have already taken place add those, register for them, put them in your library. You can access all of that great stuff at any time. So um, yeah, and they pretty much all come with freebies of some kind where you can either practice the technique or get a related design or pattern or something from that special guest to try out their designs, their work. Um, so it's a really, really wonderful resource over there at Sewing Online. .sulky.com. Linda says, is stick and stitch a stronger hold than sticky plus? Interesting question. So they are two totally different products. First off, stick and stitch is water soluble and sticky plus is a tear away. Sticky plus is heavier weight than stick and stitch. Sticky Plus is what we use for, let's say, hoopless embroidery. It has a lot of other uses for it as well, but most often for when we cannot hoop a fabric, we hoop Sticky Plus instead, and then we stick our fabric to it so that our fabric is still stabilized and in the hoop, but it's not being marred by the hooping process. Um, so as far as a stronger hold, I might venture to say Sticky Plus is a little bit stronger than the sticker that you create using Stick and Stitch. Does that make sense? Okay. Leslie says, I wonder how many of the 167 videos I've been a part of. Well, I definitely recognize your name. You may have been here since the beginning. And how far have we come, right? <laughs> All right. Can't wait to start the project. Perfect. All right, well, I'm not sure that I'm caught up with all of the great comments and questions today, but I will go through them here after our live stream. And if you ever need a question, oh, sorry, Barbara, let's answer this one. Um, can a piece of knit be used instead of a double shirt? Okay, so if you want to do reverse applique, but you won't, don't want to add a second shirt underneath, right? Um, you know, you probably could use another piece of knit underneath your outer shirt. However, it's not going to be attached very well. It's only going to be attached along your applique stitching. So you would want to trim away your motif sections from your outer shirt. And then when you turn it to the wrong side, so your shirt is wrong side out, you'd want to trim away the shirt or the knit fabric close to the stitching line as well. And it might be a little not as comfortable to wear um, because you'll feel the edges of that. You might be able to put a little piece of tender touch fusible, cutaway, lightweight, silky stabilizer, and fuse that to the back of um, your knit fabric piece so that you don't have, you know, the feeling of that next to your skin. Um, but, you know, almost everything is possible. So I say give it a go. If you don't want a second t-shirt under, underneath, you don't want the extra bulk of that. Um, I just would, would, caution you so that you don't have, let's say, like a big rectangle of fabric underneath that's kind of showing through because t-shirts aren't very forgiving in that regard. Um, you know, you can see a lot of lines and lumps and bumps underneath um, of some t-shirts, that is. 
All right. Yes. I'd rather put a panel with tender touch farther out. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Perfect. Stitch twice around the outer edge of the motif. Great idea. And could you maybe attach it at the side seams, I think you're saying? Um, the shirt underneath? Certainly. I mean, you could cut a panel of knit to match the front of your t-shirt and kind of attach it at the neckline, shoulder seams, and maybe even the arm's eye and the side seams. And then it's kind of like you're using a second t-shirt, but you don't have the extra bulk along your back could also cut away an existing t-shirt. If you have a t-shirt that you love the, the front of it, you want it to be revealed inside of your reverse applique motif, and you're gonna create you know, maybe a big heart or something to reveal what's underneath, um, you could cut away the entire back of the t-shirt, probably. I don't see why not. So lots of different options. All right. Let's see. Okay, Leslie Ann says you could also cut a back piece that is drafted from the original tee and sew it at the neck and sides and hem. Okay, yes. So just the back is lined. So many different options. And that's why we come together here on So What? Because everyone has great ideas to bring to the party. And that's really what I love about this community so much. It's amazing. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Be sure to join next Tuesday for another So What? Make sure you are registered for Machine Embroidery Basics and Beyond so that you can join us live next Wednesday at sewingonline.sulky.com. If you have any questions that I didn't answer today, any questions about our events, any questions about our products, maybe you're in the middle of a sewing project and you need some help, reach out to us at info at sulky.com and we are happy to answer your questions. All right. Thanks again for joining me today and I'll see you next week on another So What?